This is a perfect miter joint. And I did it with this. And this. Hey fellow garage fabbers, I've decided to take a short break from the Mighty Max build to knock out a few simple fab projects around the house. Don't worry, we'll get back on the truck shortly, but this gives me the opportunity to share some of the simple fabrication hacks I've come up with over the years to help me get projects done in this tiny garage, because that's what this channel is all about. Today's project is a headboard. The design is simple. A frame made of unfinished three inch square thin wall steel tubing with mitered corners and a backboard made from some leftover wood flooring. Man, that, that is beautiful. I cannot wait to see this finished. The blueprints are done. Let's get to work. Hands down, the best way to make precision miter cuts is with one of these, but I haven't always had one of these and they're only useful if the material you're using isn't too large for the machine. Also, I'm bladeless at the moment. So today, I'm going back to my roots. Cutting an angle with a cutoff wheel is easy, especially in flat material. It gets more challenging when the depth of the material gets thicker and the blade can no longer reach the opposite side. Then, you need to mark both sides. Cut one side, flip the material, and cut the opposite side. Doing that precisely isn't really easy, and any lack of precision in marking or cutting, or both for that matter, will really show up in a miter joint. And that's where this thingy comes in. It looks complicated, I know, but this modern marvel will make life much easier. I've made one for every size tube I've used, and I reach for it for every frame notch I build, or anything that requires a miter joint. To use it, determine what angle you want, in this case, just an easy 45 degrees. Line up the tool on the mark you just made and scribe the opposite side. Done. You now have two marks at identical angles, precisely opposite one another. The rest just depends on your ability to cut on a line. Making the tool is almost as easy. Start with a piece of tubing the size of the material you need to miter. In my case, three inches. Cut two lengths of one inch flat stock, significantly longer than your workpiece. So the tool is useful for several different heights of material. Clamp the two pieces of flat stock to the material you plan to cut and make sure they're both flat on your work surface. Remember, the entire point is to make both legs perfectly parallel to each other. Insert your piece of pipe and weld it all together. The tool is essentially finished, but I like to clean them up just a bit, just out of pride.
Hopefully you find this tool as useful as I do. Leave a comment and let me know what project you used it on. I've decided to split this video into two parts in case any of you are grossed out by furniture building. Part one, this one, a quick tip for steel miter joints and part two, the complete headboard project and spoiler alert, it's already done and it turned out so good. If you're interested, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss it. If you're not interested, hit the subscribe button and the bell anyways, because this channel is going to be huge. We've got some really big plans. Until the next one, my friends, keep moving forward.